All right, maybe we wait a few seconds for, uh, yeah, okay. I think it's uh, uh, 8 45 now. Uh, we should start, I think. So, all right, sorry about all the troubles. Uh, uh, a lot of the last uh, minutes uh, corrections of the Zoom IDs. That's horrible. But uh, anyway, finally, we, we, uh, we, we can start. Uh, so, today we're really honored to have uh, um, Dimitri from New Hampshire to give us a talk. And I think a lot of my students and, and also colleagues who uh, work in the field of uh, uh, topological orders and the sensor categories or uh, related areas are uh, uh, known Dimitri very well, yeah, because he's a, he's a founder of the, the mathematical theory of refusion categories. Uh, many of his work become uh, really uh, well known and, and people, um, when we, when we uh, chat or uh, discuss with uh, my colleague or um, even physicist or my, and with my student and, and other colleagues, we usually refer, oh, you know, he's a, he's, he's a uh, N in the ENO. <laughs> not, not only ENO, you know, uh, DMNO as well, and the DDNO and the DNO, you know, so it's getting, it's very, uh, so there are a lot of uh, fundamental uh, work uh, on the tensor category was uh, uh, finished by Dimitri. So we're really honored to have him to uh, speak today uh, in our seminar. So, oh yeah, Dimitri, maybe you can share your screen. So that sure, I, yes, I, okay. Um, yeah, but I have, a, okay, I have, a, I have this, so maybe I could. So I think he's gonna talk about the minimal extension of, uh, you know, right. something in the uh, sharing. Yes, okay, so I'll share, let, let me open the, uh, can, okay, can you see the screen? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, it's 100. Okay. Okay, so, okay great. So he's going to talk us, uh, uh, tell us about the minimal extension of the symmetric fusion categories and the weak groups. All right. Okay. All yours. Okay. Thank you very much, Liang, for, for kind words. And it's, uh, thank you for the invitation and opportunity to speak at this seminar. Um, yes. So uh, I will talk about uh, minimal extensions of. Uh, Asymmetric fusion categories and with groups. Uh, um, so, uh, well, I will start by uh, introducing some basic notions to, to make sure everybody is on, on the same page. So, uh, we'll work today with fusion categories over complex numbers. Uh, and uh, so let me recall some basic definitions. Uh, if fusion category is a semi-simple tensor category, meaning that there is a, a tensor product functor on this category, which is um, uh, associative in the following sense to the two uh, tensor products of x, y, and z are not in general equal, but rather uh, isomorphic. And this isomorphism is called associativity constraint. And uh, this constraint itself satisfies a certain coherence condition called the Pentagon diagram. Uh, the name fusion comes from the following uh, property that if you take uh, a pair of simple objects, x, i, x, j, and tensor them together, the result um, decomposes into a direct sum of simple objects, x, k, possibly with some multiplicity. So, so such a decomposition is called a fusion, uh, fusion rules. Uh, now, I'm not a physicist, but as far as I understand, uh, physically, this corresponds to fusing of two particles and decomposing them uh, back to a um, union of elementary particles. Um, there are many interesting examples of fusion categories, um, in, particular, uh, in particular many examples come from uh, representations of groups, uh, semi-simple Hopf algebras and quantum groups. So there, there are many uh, classification results, many interesting examples, uh, but uh, what I'm going to talk about today is a certain, uh, uh, mm, a certain group associated to uh, 
to asymmetric fusion category called the group of minimal extensions, which wasn't reduced by Lan, Kong, and Van in 2016. So, uh, but let me give some examples which uh, will be useful in, in, the, in what follows. So here is a very basic, but still important example. Uh, one can take uh, a category of G graded vector spaces. That is a vector spaces along with a decomposition uh, where the homogeneous components are labeled by uh, elements of a group. Um, now this decomposition respects the uh, tensor product respects this decomposition. So meaning that when we multiply two homogeneous components, the result belongs to the homogeneous component, which is the product uh, of the two. Now, in this case, the associativity, it shows that associativity is not always kind of the, the obvious one. So here, what one can do is to twist the usual vector space assess associativity by means of a trick cycle only. Okay, the resulting category is called uh, VGG omega, it's the most general example of a pointed category. Uh, now, incidentally, as I speak, and if you have questions, please uh, do not hesitate to interrupt me uh, uh, and ask. I, I, I mean, I don't see your faces when I look at the screen, but uh, everybody is welcome to uh, ask questions at any point. Um, okay, so next, we are going to talk about braided categories. So the braiding is uh, the central notion of this talk. So the braiding is a way to permute a pair of objects, X and Y. Again, braiding uh, is not an equality, but rather uh, an isomorphism, which is to satisfy certain uh, coherence conditions called the hexagon diagrams. Hexagon diagrams. Um, again, uh, please uh, let me not uh, uh, draw these diagrams, but you can imagine that these diagrams are uh, express the compatibility between braiding and associativity. Again, the most basic example um, of uh, a braided fusion category is a pointed fusion category. So such a category uh, 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 would correspond to a quadratic form on an abelian on an abelian group, so quadratic form Q with values in the multiplicative group of a field. And the way it's related is that uh, this quadratic form corresponds to the uh, self braiding of object with itself, okay? Of a simple object with itself. Now, this braiding, uh, I mean, braidings can come in different varieties and have different properties. Uh, and there are two extremes, which are measured by what is called the symmetric center of the category. So again, and an, as an analogy, think about the quadratic form. So quadratic form can be non-degenerate, it can be degenerate, or it can be trivial. <laughs> uh, similarly, uh, for a braided category, there are all these uh, extremes. So namely, uh, the analog of the radical of a quadratic form is the so-called symmetric center. It's a subcategory of C, which consists of all the objects such that the square braiding of an object uh, with any other object of the category is identity. So this square braiding we will see often today, uh, it's really the measure of how trivial or how non-trivial the braiding is. Okay, so now, uh, like I said, there are two extremes. If this symmetric center is as small as possible, that is the category, the subcategory of vector spaces, or which is the same, the multiples of the uh, identity object, we say that such category is non-degenerate. The other extreme is that when this uh, uh, symmetric center is the whole category, meaning that the square braiding is always identity, then we will say that the category is symmetrical. 
Okay, one uh, example, important example for non-degenerate category is constructed as follows. So for any fusion category A, there is a construction called the Drinfield cycle, uh, which uh, takes A and produces a non-degenerate braided fusion category. Uh, so one has to distinguish these two centers. They are both called centers, but they are very different. So this one is the symmetric center, and this one is non-degenerate center. Um, any questions? All right, now move on. Now, uh, well, it's very hard to, of course, classify uh, all non-degenerate categories. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, symmetric categories are very well understood uh, thanks to the result of Delin. Namely, uh, they, all, uh, they are constructed in the following way. So we start with a, uh, well, in this case, a finite group G and take a central element Z of order at most two. So it's either identity or an element of order two. Then we construct the following category. So I denote it like this, rep GZ. As a fusion category, this is the category of, of finite dimensional representations of a group. Um, so there is no difference here. It's just like, it's just a rep G. The braiding, however, is different. So for rep G, the standard braiding is just the permutation, the flip of the two factors. For this category, R rep G Z, the braiding is defined as follows. So you pick a pair of reducible representations, V and W. Then uh, this element Z acts on them because it's square is one. It acts on V and W either by one or by minus one by Schultz lambda. And so if it acts by minus one on both of them, then the braiding is given by uh, taking the flip of the of the of, of the elementary tensor and uh, introducing the minus sign before it. Otherwise, it's just the usual flip, the usual asymmetric uh, braiding. So, uh, in uh, the terminology, is that uh, such category rep G is called Tanakian. And rep GZ for non trivial Z is called super Tanaki. Um, I think here uh, it would be good to mention, like, the simplest example. So, uh, the uh, category of super vector spaces. Super vector spaces is. Uh, well, it is of course symmetric category and it's representations of Z2, uh, whereas Z is the non-trivial element of uh, order two in the group. Okay, so that's the simplest example of a super Tanakian category. Right, so now, uh, now I'm ready to introduce the main, um, uh, the main definition. Oh, for, can uh, I ask a question? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, the the, tana, the terminology for a Tanakan category does not need the G to be a finite group, right? That's right, yes. Uh, okay, I see. Yes, yeah. but um, see. yeah, and in fact, the Lin stadium goes way beyond the uh, uh, fusion categories. It uh, classifies all symmetric categories of exponential growth, okay? So, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, for, but the, for the purposes of the stock, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, which is strictly speaking not necessary. One can develop this theory in, or at least one can try to develop this theory certainly in non semi simple finite setting. And uh, for the infinite setting, this, well, I'm not aware of any theory, okay? Uh -huh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. Anyways, uh, so, uh, all right. So let, let's, so that this is the main notion, that of a minimal extension. So it starts with the following question, which uh, uh, sounds rather innocent. And, uh, you know, perhaps at first it appears like some sort of a curiosity. Namely, uh, we are interested in non-degenerate categories. These are the most important categories for all applications. 
However, you know, uh, well, sometimes you are given category which is degenerate. And what you want to do is to embed it into a non-degenerate category, but you don't want this category to which you embed to be very large. So you want to embed it into a non-degenerate category of the minimal possible size. Okay, so what I mean by minimal possible size. So here is the definition. Um, so let's see be a braided category, possibly degenerate. Then a minimal extension of this category C is an embedding of C into a category M such that M is non-degenerate and has the following property. Look, uh, inside M, there will be objects whose square braiding with objects of C is identity. Well, for sure, you know, objects in the symmetric center of C have this property. But a priori, there can be some other objects. So in other words, you enlarge your category, you, you introduce um, kind of more objects that, ha that, are, that have trivial monodromy with objects in C. This could happen. Now, if it didn't happen, that is to say that, you know, the only objects uh, that have trivial square braiding uh, with objects of C are those that were already there in the symmetric center of C. We say that such extension is minimal. In other words, we do not create any additional uh, uh, trivialities of the braiding. So such an extension is called minimal. Now, the problem, however, is that such extension does not always exist, okay? It's not always possible to produce uh, such an extension. And there is an abstraction which I'm going to discuss next. All right, now to discuss this abstraction um, uh, in the right terms, I will have to quickly introduce the notion of a width group, which is an interesting notion on its own right. Now, uh, so what's the width group? Uh, here is the idea. Look, uh, it is hard and impossible maybe to classify uh, non-degenerate braided categories up to equivalence. Instead, we'll, we can uh, ask for something simpler. Namely, uh, we can uh, try to classify uh, non-degenerate braided categories modular Drinfield centers. Remember, this was one of the constructions of a non-degenerate category. So we consider a monoid. So we take all non-degenerate categories, they form monoid under the tensor product. We mod out by the sub-monoid of Drinfeld centers. And it so happens that this quotient is in fact a group called the width group uh, of uh, non-degenerate braided categories. So the product here is the Dillon tensor product. The identity is the class, the width class of any center in particular of the category of vector spaces. So I use this notation, C in square brackets for the width class of C. And uh, there is also of course an inverse, but the inverse of C is the category, uh, the inverse of the class of C is the class of C reversed, where a C reversed is the, uh, uh, braided category with the reverse braid. So I, again, this is an interesting object to study and something, you know, and many things can be said about its structure, but uh, I'm going to uh, move uh, further now. There is a- Yeah, of, excuse uh, me. Yes, please. I have a question here. It does a, uh, do we know this uh, width group, uh, 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 is uh, the full structure with group? How much we do know? Uh, do we already know everything we, about it? We know, we know quite a bit. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. So, I mean, since you asked, I, I can, I can, maybe like uh, over here. Okay. So, uh, yes. Um, let's see. Uh, well, I, I can put it like this way. So, the with group is a. Uh, Okay, okay, I think the best way is to do this. Uh, there is an exact sequence, w, w, and here it's the 16, and here it's zero, 
And here, uh, what again, I'm going to introduce it a little bit later, but let me just go WSVM. So it's a relative, it's kind of the super, okay. super wet group. Super wet group. This extension is not split. And, but what we know very well is the structure of the super wet group. The super wet group um, has three parts. So it has a classical part. Um, well, classical. Then it has uh, a Z2 torsion, countable, countably many sum of copies of Z2 plus uh, countably many copies of Z. So as an abstract, I mean, I hope this notation is, is, is clear, right? So that's a free group of countable rank. This is elementary abelian um, a two group of countable rank. And this is classical. What I mean by classical, it's a part that comes from um, quadratic uh, uh, forms on groups. Okay. Again, this is known, this is uh, an uh, infinite abelian torsion group. So okay. as an abstract group, we know it. However, um, what we don't know very well is how to choose a basis of these two, two, two things, you know. Okay. But as an abstract group, we know it. Does this answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a sure, sure. Okay, so so incidentally, I was about to introduce, you know, like I, uh, what this means. Namely, there is a relative version of the wit group, which is defined as follows. So fix a symmetric category E. Uh, now, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to consider uh, braided categories that are degenerate, but uh, with the following property. The, this degeneracy, this, which is controlled by the symmetric center, is the uh, group, sorry, is the symmetric category E. So the symmetric, so we, we can call them, uh, what's the name, non-degenerate over E. So non-degenerate over E. So the symmetric center is fixed, it's E. Now in this case, one can develop a theory of uh, such um, fusion categories and braided categories over uh, E. And there was a recent paper by uh, Long San who uh, developed uh, uh, this theory. And so what one can do is to divide this relative version of the wit group. So one factors out the monoid of this uh, uh, non-degenerate braided categories over E over what we call E relative Greenfield centers. Again, this can be defined uh, uh, in the way which is uh, similar to that of the uh, usual Greenfield center. And so, uh, so we call it WE, so this is, uh, um, this thing WSV that I put here when I uh, answer the question about the structure of the group, it's a version of this. So here E is SV. So it's kind of the simplest uh, version of this relative width group. Now, these two groups, the ordinary width group and the relative width group are related to each other by uh, a homomorphism. Namely, you can take the width class of C and then tensor this uh, representative of this class with E. So you get uh, a, uh, an element of the uh, relative with group. So this is a homomorphism, yeah. So what is this uh, E relative Greenfield center? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's right here, okay? So here is what, what we do. So we start with a fusion category A with the following property that uh, E is contained in the center of A. Okay, okay. Such category A is called, you know, fusion category over E, which is okay. very appropriate. Think about like the notion of an algebra, right? Over, yeah. uh, over like a field or commutative ring. So this commutative ring is embedded into the center of an algebra, right? So same here. It's a fusion category over E. Then inside the center of A, the same, the same Greenfield center we introduced before. You can take the centralizer of this copy of E. Okay. So, so you take like not the whole center, but only a part of it. And inside this part, E will be the symmetric center. 
So, so v v very natural thing. So okay. uh, it has all these universal properties that center has. All right. So uh, this homomorphism from W to the relative group is a very interesting thing. So uh, it turns out that abstractions to existence of minimal extensions are, are related to this uh, with homomorphism. Um, so here is a tier, a proposition which appeared in a recent paper of Ostrich and you uh, that goes like this. So suppose you have a uh, braided category whose symmetric center is the uh, is E. Then you can ask whether C admits a minimal extension. And the answer is that it admits it if and only if the class of C belongs to the image of this homomorphism. Okay, so this homomorphism, therefore, uh, you see, so the abstractions to existence of such a minimal extension would live in the kernel of this homomorphism, uh, which is okay, uh, and that's uh, in general a open problem to describe this kernel. To, in other words, to describe the uh, place where all these abstractions appear. Now, something is known. So recently, uh, Johnson, Freud, and Rotter proved this uh, theorem, namely, um, well, there are two ways to state it. So first of all, uh, it says that braided categories whose uh, symmetric center is the category of super vector spaces. So such categories are called, um, I think, the, like super degenerate. So, sorry, super non-degenerate, non-degenerate, or sometimes they are called slightly degenerate. That such categories necessarily admit minimal extensions. So this was an open conjecture for about a decade, or uh, in uh, agreement with what I just said, this says that this homomorphism from W to uh, uh, from the width group to the relative width group of uh, over super vector spaces is surjective. Again, I use this fact uh, when I uh, produce this uh, exact uh, sequence, right? So, which allows you to be to have this precise description of the structure of the width group. Okay, so this is how things uh, stand uh, with. Uh, Mm, arbitrary braided categories. Oh, now, uh, well, let's... Uh, Dimitri, uh, maybe uh, I, 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 can you go a little upper? So I want to see the, the ostrich uh, and the user result. It says that is in the image. That, that This is for arbitrary. Okay, yeah, this is that, for arbitrary that's for episode. Right, right. And uh, uh, Johnson Freed is for, uh, what, what is Johnson? Okay, so, uh, all right, so I mean, well, these are very different results. So Ostrich and you give a kind of criterion uh, when a minimal extension exists, right? So uh -huh. for particular C, yeah. you know, it exists if C yeah. is in the image. Yeah. So what Johnson, Freud, and Rutter showed is that when E is a super vector space, that this map is surjective. Oh, okay. So everything is in the image. Everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. And I think this is the, uh, well, yeah, so it's actually very, not very often that, you know, that this thing is subjective. And uh, like I said, in general, the description of the kernel is not known, at least to me. All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, so we are going to switch to uh, minimal extensions of symmetric categories. You see, well, unlike in general, for a symmetric categories, minimal extensions always exist. For example, here is an example. You can embed symmetric category into its center. That's the, into its Drinfeld center. So that's the smallest such uh, extension. So, and then, well, and then you wonder how many uh, extensions are there. So there was a uh, great observation in the work of Lan, Kong, and Van in, uh, from 2016, I believe, that minimal extensions of a symmetric of a symmetric fusion category if form a group. So 
this group, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it was introduced to study a symmetry protected, uh, protected uh, topological faces of matter. So this uh, um, uh, symmetric um, um, category sitting inside somehow, it, uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, describes this, that symmetry of, of this topological face. So, uh, and, and that's great because, you know, it's much uh, more fruitful and uh, beneficial to try to describe a group than just to describe a set. So the uh, product of minimal extensions, so suppose that there are two, let's say E inside them one and E inside them two. So here is how the product is defined. So one can take the uh, tensor product of M1 and M2, and inside this tensor product, there is a canonical commutative algebra sitting inside E tensor E, which is in turn inside M1 tensor M2. So one can take the category of local modules with respect to this algebra, and it turns out that this category is a uh, minimal extension of E, so which is the product by definition. This is associative. The identity is this extension that I mentioned before, where E sits inside its Drinfeld center. And the inverse, I think we have seen this before, the inverse of the uh, of an extension is the reverse extension. So you put E inside M reversed, where a reversed means that a reversed or opposite braiding. Right? So whenever you have a braiding, you can always reverse it and get potentially different braiding. So we have a group. Well, in fact, it's more than a group. It's actually, a, um, I think, at least a two group. But for now, let's just think about uh, the group structure. Mx e, the group of minimal extensions of a symmetric um, category E. So here are again some basic examples that I appeared in uh, the papers of, there are several papers of Len, Kong, and Van. The first example is very uh, instructive. So namely, you can take the, of course, the simplest example of a symmetric category, the Tanakian category of representations of a group G. In this case, the minimal extensions are, mm, correspond to uh, uh, the third cohomology classes. So the corresponding group is the third cohomology group of G with coefficients in the multiplicative group of the field. So incidentally, let's say, like suppose you did not know what the uh, cohomology groups are. That's how you would discover them. Right? So that's how you would discover third cohomology and how you show that it's in fact a group. In this case, a minimal extensions are given by twisted Drinfeld doubles or equivalently as centers of this categories that I introduced in the beginning of, of the talk. So this is a twisted Drinfeld doubles. So such things, of course, are very well known. I don't know for how many years, like 30, maybe 40 years already. They're very well studied, but you know, again, the result shows that there is nothing else, only such things. Another example is when we take a, the small super Tanakian category, that of super vector spaces, super vector spaces. And it turns out that this cyclic group of order 16, that's a fundamental fact, uh, which is of course, you know, um, very important both in mathematics and physics. It's, uh, I mean, of course, this is called a 16 fold way. And uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, Kitaev, I think, was probably the first person who uh, observed this uh, phenomenon. Um, all right. So now that's all nice and good. However, of course, there are uh, symmetric categories that are. Um, uh, more complicated than those that are mentioned, right? Not just the category of uh, uh, degraded uh, vector spaces or super vector spaces, but arbitrary. So what I'm going to talk next is like various uh, ways to uh, actually uh, make progress in computing these groups. 
So first of all, I think it's a conceptual result. There is a certain long exact sequence that involves uh, the groups of minimal extensions and um, the width groups that I introduced before. So here is like here is the way we are going to start. So I remember there was this a uh, map, uh, this homomorphism from the width group to the relative width group, right? So what this S E does is uh, E takes C to a uh, C tensor E. That's a homomorphism. Uh, now, uh, but uh, well, there is also a map from the group of minimum, very natural map from the group of minimal extensions to the width group. Namely, look, a minimal extension in particular determines a, a non-degenerate category M. So to such category M, we can assign its width class, right? So we have this map. So it turns out that the image of this homomorphism is the kernel of S. So it's exact and double. And this suggests that one can think of the dist groups, of course, um, we have already seen that minimal extensions are, are related to width groups, but uh, here this um, relation is made more uh, mm, kind of, you know, more understandable because here uh, you can think of this as a vibration, vibration, of with groups uh, and the group of minimal extensions is the fiber of this. And this is justified by the appearance of the following uh, long exact sequence. So from uh, algebraic, uh, uh, from, from the homotopy theory, whenever you have uh, a vibration, there is a, a long exact sequence of homotopy groups. So, and this, uh, uh, this triple becomes just one, becomes a part of this long exact sequence. So let me try to explain this, what it looks like. So this is the part, you know, that I described already, right? So this is the map between width groups and this is embedded, uh, this is a homomorphism from the minimal extensions to the, to the width group. Now, the next uh, row uh, will be the following. So here, uh, um, for a symmetric category E, let a sigma E denote a, um, what is now a symmetric fusion of uh, two category of uh, E module categories. Well, I don't want to go into this higher uh, categorical business, but one can definitely talk about minimal extensions of higher symmetric categories, one which I denote like this two, two MX, minimal extensions of two categories. Uh, one can talk about the two categorical analog of the width group and its relative analog. Okay, so again, uh, the way the sequence uh, is uh, written tells you that these are homotopy groups of a certain homotopy spectrum. And these are also homotopy groups of another homotopy spectrum, which we call the width spectrum. And that's the minimal extension groups, which can also be organized into a homotopy spectrum. Uh, all right, so now the previous row here, uh, well, also needs to be uh, explained. So uh, here are ME, well, you can think of it as uh, minimal extensions of E that are centers. So minimal extensions of E that are uh, centers. So that when we uh, take those, uh, map those to the width group, their classes are trivial. You can also think of this in the spirit of this, um, theory of uh, fusion categories over E. So namely this ME is, uh, uh, I think the way to view it is the group of invertible Marita equivalence classes over E. And uh, again, I mentioned this paper of Long uh, San, uh, who showed that uh, in this case, the center is a complete invariant of Marita equivalence class, which is an analog of the, uh, known result uh, in the uh, uh, usual theory of fusion category. 
things. Anyway, so this I oh. think uh, somehow you know relates the uh, these groups that I introduced and puts them in the proper prospect. I think uh, it's also can, yes, please. Can I? Um, so it's look at uh, this is a, a pretty essential idea. So I want to slow down a little bit. So uh, you you said the, um, the uh, I mean the the, the short sequence. Um, um, the triple, maybe you said, mm -hmm. yeah. in the middle. This one, uh, you 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 think you should view this as a fabrication, and but uh, I wanna. Um, so the first arrow is not uh, even the first arrow mapped to the kernel is not an uh, bijection, right? It's uh, no, no, it's onto, so, but it's onto. So, uh, uh, okay. The, that's right. That, that's that's why we consider. I mean, in general, right? So that's why yeah. we consider the sequence in both directions, right? Yeah, 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 so, right. so this right. arrow has a kernel. So this uh -huh. has a co-kernel. And I those, see. you know, the, those. I mean, and the kernel is precisely the minimum extension of uh, epsilon dart R centers. Oh, I didn't correct. know that. Yes. I see. No, I, I, I mean, the, 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 this is clear, right? Because, you know, like, what, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. the kernel of this? The, the, yeah, this yeah, yeah, is. exactly, exactly, so, no, exactly. Well, this is somehow like one categorical story, which, you know, I mean, I mean, to me, it's more familiar, but the things yeah. that are less familiar occur, I'm sorry, occur at the next uh, level, right? So one goes into yeah, 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 categorical right. things, and then I don't think anything is known for sure. There are like... Uh, I see claims conjectures but yes so again, yeah i see uh -huh. yeah it, again it, it's i mean it's it's good i mean i'll talk later about this you know so the sequence is good for computations now what's the true meaning of this vibration I, at this point i cannot tell for sure i'm not a topologist but i think it, it should really be um it should mean something um okay so uh Oh wait! Another another thing, you're saying this is exactly analog of the uh, a series of sequence of aberrations. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the similarity is unmistakable, right? So this, is, <laughs> this, this sequence is, is, is that's exactly how it looks, right? You have uh -huh. three spaces, and then like the sequence of this homotopy groups. That's exactly what their sequence is. It, it's certainly not a coincidence. I see. I see. Yeah. So you have an arrow from uh, uh, this uh, relative weak group uh, W E. Yes, like, like the, the, this arrow. Back. Yeah, yeah, that arrow, that arrow seems uh, mysterious at this stage. <laughs> um. Well, this I can. Uh, well, okay. Actually, I can explain. Uh, it's. I mean, again, I don't want it to be mysterious. So what we do is this: so we take uh, some category C, like you know, uh, well, the class of C in uh, the uh, this with group. So what one can do to it, one assigns to it the um, the uh, two center, or how should I call it, like, like maybe two C, two center of the uh, category of, okay, so let, let me start over. So, so C is a braided category. Models of C, module categories over C is a fusion to a category. Now, what one can do is to take the two center of this fusion to a category, uh, and uh, this would be the uh, uh, minimal uh, extension of the uh, of the um, uh, category of this. Uh, of module categories over E. Does this make sense? So this is similar like to this arrow, right? So here you have minimal extensions of E that are centers. So here you have minimal extensions of uh, mod E that are two centers. So it's kind okay. of the arrow in the previous in the previous um, in the previous row. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, Okay, so well, again, this is an interesting sequence, even like in the simplest example. So, for, for example, so if you start with the Tanakian category, uh, Reb G, then uh, let's see. Well, in this, I mean, in this case, like certain arrows are zero, but what what is non-trivial is that you have this uh, 
homomorphism S from the width group to its relative version. And then you have a map like which is like this arrow that you asked about, like this, this arrow over here. And uh, well, this group is identified with the fourth um, the homology group of C star. Again, this is where the abstractions uh, live. So if uh, there is a theory of this uh, G extensions and uh, you know such extensions, again, once you start to computing them, there is an abstraction that lives in fourth cohomology. So there is this arrow. Again, I don't know really if it's surjective or not because uh, I don't know the calculator. Uh, uh, Dimitri, can I ask you another question? Please. Um, when you explain the, this arrow to, to Xiao Gang, I, 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 it is the same question for the question mark things is uh, why, why the red arrow is, is uh, actually a, a group homomorphism? Oof, um, well, uh, it, well, again, there is a, some computation, but the, the, the reason is pretty much the same why this arrow is a group homomorphism. So one defines the product of these two, um, I don't know how to call them, these two minimal extensions, just mimicking your definition of the product of minimal extensions. So. Uh, one takes, you know, like this local modules over a certain uh, commutative to algebra, etc. So uh, pre pretty much the, the same type of an argument that uh, uh, shows oh. that, that for one category. So at least that's I how see. I understand. Oh, so, so you're saying uh, this type of, uh, so you, you, you uh, the local module, but, but this is in two categories. This, this have been fully established. That's what you said. Well, uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, all, all right. So, I mean, I... I <laughs> I can counter this question. I think I asked you at some point. If, if oh, really? <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, and, and, oh. and you gave me some very useful references to your recent work. So I was under impression that it was established, but. Uh, oh, um, I see. Okay. But, now, but no, but, yeah. but, oh, I see. But, but that reference I give is, uh, oh, uh, oh. Could, could okay, yeah. but okay. anyway, so I, I don't want to- But that's the idea maybe. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is something that can be characterized as a work in progress. Okay, oh, so oh, I see. Not, uh -huh. not, yeah. not um, uh, published anywhere. So this is what I'm currently trying to do, but I'm, I'm quite confident that that's how things are. Oh, but, I see. But again, like as you know, this see, like two, two categories is a kind of complicated business, but I mean, recently I lots of, and the formal things were established, and I believe all the I necessary machinery is, is present to do this. Uh -oh. Okay, so now, but okay, so even for FG, there are open questions. So for a super Tanakian, E is even less is known. So this is just completely open, okay? So uh, so we can think of, uh, so again, so the point of, of all this discussion is to, put this minimal extensions in the perspective and think of this as a fiber uh, or for a certain uh, functor or uh, or uh, homotopy class of maps between um, the width groups. Okay, so now let's uh, kind of uh, go like a little bit more down to earth. And uh, well, this is of course good to have such long exact sequence, but how to compute this group of minimal extensions and concrete situations. So, I mean, it's instructive to think of it as an analog of the third cohomology group. As we have seen, this is precisely what it is for Tanaki and E. Now, uh, in usual group cohomology, there is a unit formula that uh, gives a, uh, that helps to compute the cohomology of any degree of the direct product of two groups. Now, there is a categorical analog of this. Namely, uh, there is a formula that allows to compute the group of minimal extensions in the following situation. So when our uh, category is a direct product of a Tanakian category and some arbitrary. All right, so in this case, there is, a, and from this, of course, one can recover the usual unit formula. So for instance, if you take E to be um, Tanaki, and again, that's precisely the formula that computes the cohomology, third cohomology of the um, 
of the direct product. So, the, so this categorical QNET formula goes as follows. So this group of minimal extension is a product of two groups, um, very different groups. So one of them is the minimal extensions of the second factor. And another one is the group, which I called XGE, which is the group of G cross extensions of E, or which is the same, I'm going to unfold what it means, but I prefer to talk not about G cross extensions, but uh, as uh, there is an equivalent way to describe this, this is the same as central extensions. So what is this precisely? So here a G is a group and such extensions are G graded categories uh, such that the trivial component, the trivial homogeneous component is E, and it is embedded, so this is symmetric in this case, symmetric. So that this trivial component is embedded into the center of this extension, okay? So this is the, I think this is a concise and the clean way to talk about this G cross uh, extensions. So uh, now there is again uh, a, a theory of such extensions, which was developed by, uh, it can go for uh, Ostrich and myself uh, that tells you that such extensions can be constructed by means of uh, monoidal two functors from G to the Picard group of E. So here I should point that the Picard, uh, Picard two group of E. So that the Picard groups of symmetric categories are very well known and understood. And in principle, such things can be, uh, can be computed. It is remarkable that such extensions here themselves form a group. Okay, well, perhaps it's not that such a big surprise because uh, group extensions uh, do form groups and here it's really kind of a group theoretical setting, right? So both G and E come from group theory. So one can explicitly describe uh, this uh, unit uh, isomorphism uh, to see how each of these two factors is in, uh, how these factors are embedded into the group of minimal extensions uh, of the product. So, I mean, it's easy to embed this, right? It's just a minimal extension of the second uh, uh, factor. And these things are embedded as follows. So if you take uh, such an extension now, it's not necessarily braided and non-degenerate, just decrossed, but what you do, you take its, its center. You take the C and then take its center, and that's a minimal extension of this uh, uh, direct product. Okay, so so we have this machinery. So you know there is a formula, and the, the problem now is to compute. Uh, well, is to compute really uh, this factor. So uh, how to employ it? So how to uh, uh, use it for a concrete computations. So here is a, a concrete situation where it helps a lot. You see, so uh, namely what one can do is to take a pointed symmetric category E. Now what it means to be pointed in this setting is that it's going to be representations of AZ where A is abelian. So now, really, uh, this is now a problem about linear algebra, right? Because um, pointed, uh, um, well, pointed uh, symmetric categories are just, uh, I mean, pointed braided categories are just quadratic forms as we have seen. So now, but in this case, you know, there is of course a fundamental theorem that tells you that every abelian group is a product of cyclic ones. So what you can do, you can separate the super Tanakian uh, uh, direct summand here. Well, I, I guess it's a bad notation. So E maybe like E zero here, like there. Okay, so one can separate like a Tanakian part and the super Tanakian part in such a way that super Tanakian part is cyclic. So, so this is a super Tanakian. So in other words, one can, uh, this is the same approach one would use 
to compute the torsca homology of an abelian group, right? You know how to compute it for every cyclic sum, and then you do it by induction, and you can actually produce a, a um, explicit formula for the torsca homology. Similarly, you can produce, well, you know, somewhat explicit formulas for the um, groups of minimal extensions of pointed of pointed uh, symmetric capabilities. So here is a couple of examples where uh, the computations are rather easy. So here, uh, of course, now it's only interesting uh, when, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, when your <coughs> abelian group is a two group, right? Because if it's, you know, the odd part is necessarily Tanakian, so you don't gain anything new. So we can take the uh, cyclic group of order to n, two to the n, I'm sorry. Uh, and take Z a non-trivial element uh, of this group. Now, in this case, the uh, group of minimal extension uh, is a cyclic group again of order uh, two to the n plus one. It's one example. So note that of course, because it's cyclic, there is only one uh, choice of this element of order two. So there is no a real, uh, um, uh, so there is no ambiguity in this notation. Um, well, second example, again, uh, I should say that, you know, in some form, these statements were known to physicists. There are very, like, uh, many papers, but uh, I think like in, in this form, you know, I think it's first appeared. Uh, uh, I, I mean, you know, so what is important is to compute the group structure. So I saw many papers where this um, um, topological phases were described as a set. But I mean, so since we know already it's a group, it, it's important to uh, to compute the group structure. So for the abelian group Z2 cross Z2, uh, you can find again, there is essentially one. Uh, element of order two, there is only one element, uh, sorry, one orbit of elements of order two. So it doesn't depend on the choice. In this case, the group is uh, Z8 cross Z16. Again, this is an application of this QNET formula. So this so, is what. Uh, so, uh, you, yes. Are, are you saying that in this case, when, uh, uh, when, when, when A is abelian, so you can reduce the problem to a uh, 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 rap G uh, and, and E? Uh, and E zero right. and E zero, yes. Uh, but you're saying E zero is relatively easier to compute, uh, and you yeah, give, me some, mean, you so give us some example. So, but is it yeah. is it uh, completely more? Um, it is completely known to to for the other cyclic. Here is the thing, right? So you know, the, here is for the, 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 the this is why I, I I bring this up, right? Because you see, like, so if you have a cyclic uh, group, you can decompose it into the groups of, uh, uh, into the product of cyclic groups of prime power order. Well, there will be like odd summons, which are Tanakian, which are not going to, and there will be like the two group, which is super Tanakian. So this is kind of the only cyclic group you should care about. That does this make sense? Yeah, I see. Okay. So yeah. a, a lot of this example have been computed, I, I suppose. Uh, well, I mean, those. I, I mean, I'm just uh, mentioning those that I that, that I computed. But uh, I in, in general, mm -hmm. there is like an algorithm, right? So okay. the point is the is, is the following: that if you have like a, and you can always decompose it into like a product of, um, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah, the cyclic groups. Let's say mm -hmm. let's say it's a two groups. So all these things are powers of two. You can mm -hmm. always achieve that this uh, fermion lives in one of the summons. Right. So you, you can, so once it's like, you know, it's, you can put it in one of the summons, then you have a Tanakian part, which is this, right? And this cyclic, you know, uh, and the cyclic group that contains fermion. So, so in other words, uh, because of the QNET formula, like this computation is sort of sufficient. The rest would amount, I mean, I'm not saying that that's precise, that you already have an answer because you will, uh, you know, you will have to compute this group, but for this, we know how to proceed, right? So this X to G E is is also uh, some somewhat easier to compute, or I mean, you already set up the theory. 
Uh, well, well you, I mean, uh, well, is it easy to compute? Well, I mean, okay, so it, it depends like of what uh, exactly you want to do. To compute it as a kind of uh, precise group is probably hard, but what you can do, you can describe like a filtration of this group. You, you have kind of like a, 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 a like a series and such certain like chain of subgroups and you know oh, all the oh, which I is, see. you know, so well, that's not exactly like it gives you the structure of a group, but in particular it gives you the order of the group. I think so. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, yes, yeah, so I just give two examples where these computations, you know, are easy to carry over uh, just by hand. But I'm sure it can be carried over in greater uh, generality. So uh, so let me now uh, finish with uh, something. Question. Yeah, please. Uh, the first example will n equal to one. Why? Why? It's so done. here, okay. So here, are n. Well, okay. I should be precise. So it's n bigger or equal to. Okay, so it's only for this. For for n equal to one, that's of course different, right? For n equal to one, this will be the uh, minimal extensions of super vector spaces, which is Z16, not Z4. So for n bigger or equal than two. So the reason like this uh, n equal one is so uh, different is the following. You see, there is a big difference when um, your uh, fermion splits and when it does not split, right? So for a SVEC, where, when n is equal to one, well, this is an example of a split super Tanakian category. However, this one is non-split, right? So here, I, you know, a SVEC is not a direct sum. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe I misunderstood the question. So here n is bigger or equal than two. Okay. Yeah. So what is uh, not known, at least like uh, to me at this point, is how to deal with uh, super Tanakian categories for non-abelian groups. So there is some difficulties, but these are difficulties of sort of uh, look. Uh, you see, like this is a problem about group theory. and there are questions about groups and their cohomology, which you know are. Uh, could be like di difficult uh, in its own way, but still this is a group theoretical question. So probably like experts would know the answer. So one thing is this in the spirit of that a long exact sequence is that we want to understand the image of this map from the group of minimal extensions to the width group. Now, I did not discuss this, but this map is identified. I mean, it factors through this group of minimal extensions over SVEC, which uh, I already mentioned is this 16. As such, this map is identified like with taking the central charge. So, and uh, what needs to be done is to explain, you know, what are the possible values of the central charge for a particular uh, of minimal extensions of a particular uh, super Tanakian category. So this could be, I mean, we know that there's some subgroup of the 16, but it could have order uh, eight, four, two, possibly one. And I'm not sure when, uh, which order occurs for which um, uh, super Tanakian category. Um, yes, I, I think that's all I wanted uh, to say. And I'm sorry if I ran uh, later than was expected. No, time is, is okay. Uh, it's, yeah. Okay, that's the end of our talk. I think so, I, yes. I see. Okay, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, thank you for a very nice talk. Thank you. All right. It's, uh, it's a time for questions. So, what? Uh, um, so you were saying that the, for non-abelian G, uh, the, the main difficulty is really a problem of Google homology. I think so. Yes, uh, like so. For, but for instance, can you, but mm -hmm. but can you, uh, do, can you express this uh, 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 modular extension group in terms of cohomology group? 
Well, I mean, like there is a there is an exact sequence, right? That we have, we had seen before. Like, like yeah, this, yeah. You can certainly this exact sequence works for arbitrary e. It's just like you want to understand better, like the uh, arrows here, right? So mm. what I must admit is that, like for instance, like this arrow here, um, I well, I don't understand. You know, like I mean, I know that the image is a subgroup of the sixteen but I don't know precisely which one. So for abelian groups, I know what happens. It's either the 16 or the eight. Uh -huh. uh, and it's uh, the 16 if it splits, you know, and uh, the eight if it does not split. For non-abelian, I don't have this knowledge. So it's still kind of open. So I have exact sequence. I just don't understand. I need, I need to better understand the, the, the maps that are. Involved. I see. Uh, where can I find this long exact sequence uh, in, in, in your paper? I mean, like, like I said, it's a work in progress. I mean, I see, I, I see. I mean, I, I think it's more fun to talk about work in progress than what is written. You know? <laughs> I see, I see, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so right. hopefully, I mean, I'll uh -huh. try to finish it in a couple of months. I'll let you know. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, so any other questions? Yeah, I think for this, uh, uh, for this uh, general uh, non tanaking case with minimum module extension, uh -huh. uh, it's a physically it corresponds to this uh, fermionic SPT state or something like that. And uh, uh -huh. there, is a, there is a calculation using several layers for this uh, group cohomology, you know, uh -huh. the, uh, maybe involving this uh, uh, maybe, maybe group cohomology or some, some two group or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's kind of like a, a Kind of component by component calculation. Somehow, I think your setup is a more more general. I kind of kind of more uh, maybe a little bit more abstract setup. Yeah. Well, if you, if you if you if you if you go into maybe this setup maybe maybe they have several layers. Then each each layer you should see something. Then that became more concrete calculation. Yeah, so I, I, I think what I saw, like, in my, I mean, I, I did read like many physics papers because there are really lots of literature on, on the subject. So what I usually see is that um, they, mathematically speaking, what they have is a, they have a filtration of this group. They have oh, okay. like, like, like a chain of subgroups and they, they say, well, that this is how quotients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th this is helpful, but at least in small examples, one would hope to compute this group explicitly. Yeah, yeah. Like, so for instance, yeah. this is, I think this is doable, you know. Uh, yeah, just... you're totally right. I think in the component form, uh, one see these uh, as a set. Uh -huh. That's right, yes, exactly. Group structure is, a, is another thing. You want to do additional computation to see the group structure, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. right. Yeah. So, I mean, like to, to me, like when somebody kind of ignores the fact that it's a group, it's very, very disappointing because that's that's what makes it, you know, so 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 nice, it's a group, right? You know, yeah. All right, all right. Um, yeah, any other questions? Um. Um, may, may I make? A, uh, I'm not sure if I uh, understand. This is too mathematical to me. But it seems like the question that you ask at the end, uh, asking about the, you know, um, whether the central charge for non abelian group, uh, whether it's odd six, uh, odd sixteen, or eight, or odd four, something like that. We have a recent work, um, kind of from a physics point of view. Uh -huh. um, maybe ask a similar question. I'm not sure if it's a exactly the same question but i think it's like, exactly the same question that i yeah, we we kind of call it like a, a enforced symmetry breaking in the sense that given a symmetry in the fermion system uh -huh. and uh, uh we kind of formulated some criterion and and uh -huh. uh, using a group cohomology and uh, something called obstruction function so that um in principle uh, you can uh, uh, like answer the question whether um, given a symmetry in this uh, uh, fermion system, whether it's a uh, you know uh, central charge um, 
is compatible with the symmetry. If uh -huh. it's not, then it will be reduced to Z8. If, if uh, there is further uh, obstruction, then you're going to be Z4 uh -huh. and further Z2. So we have some example um, uh -huh. for nonabelian group example, but we, we don't we don't have explicit calculation for a general nonabelian group. We yeah, do have I, some okay. That's great. Like I mean, it would be like if, if there is like uh, if it's uh, written somewhere, it would be very interesting to to see it. I, I had some preliminary ideas which I did not mention. So uh, th there is like a map and group cohomology called uh, Buckstein uh, map. Uh, you know, and if Yotanakian category is non-split, then somehow like the this map would determine. Um, like you know this uh, this choices whether it's the eight the four etc but again this is something like which is not uh, finalized but i would definitely be interested to to, to learn more uh, about your work sure sure um yeah I, maybe I, I will be happy to uh, send you uh, the reference oh great great i will appreciate yeah. this a lot thank you but it's um, it's uh, written uh, for Physicists, not for mathematicians. That, that's that's okay. You know, most yeah. of this thing was done by physicists anyway. So, like, uh... oh yeah, that's great to have these uh, uh, interactions. So, Dimitri, I have another question for you. Uh, okay. um, so, uh, physics is also very interesting. The case that uh, when uh, uh, Brady fusion category over E uh, non degenerate over E uh, that do not have a, a minimum logic extension. Uh, in that case, there is a characterization uh, that involve uh, uh, taking the uh, module of the C, module two category of the C, then take the Dreamfield center. Then um, in that case, you will get a uh, uh, different two module extension of uh, two rap G, you know, or, or, or two, uh, 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 um, kind of two categorical version of E. But in that case, I mean, there is a physical way to understand that situation. So here will come a question. Mm -hmm. um, since module extension does not exist, oh, sorry, minimum module extension does not, does not exist. So my question is, in this case, is that possible to have, uh, to make sense of non-minimal module extension? So that might have some mathematical structure behind it i wonder because because from the other uh let's say just e is a rap g in that case and we know that uh, uh if you take the uh, module category of c then you take the dreamfield center mm -hmm. then you should get a like a dreamfield double or you you should get a, some kind of a uh uh dagger witten type of series which is classified by h, h upper four Let's say just finite group, uh, rap G. Uh, um, okay, the E, uh, C is a, C is a, a fusion, a Brady fusion category over rap, uh, rap G. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without minimal extension, right? Without minimal extension, yes. So I wonder in this case, is that possible not go to two category? Just still thinking about, uh, is that any way to massage the the, the uh, module extension? But the only way I can think about it is a non-minimal one. So my I mean, question is, uh, is there possible to have some structure in a non Well, I, I think you can still um, tensor them. So, I mean, but, um, but this would be not a, a group anymore. Yeah. But rather That's what exactly is called the is like, um, what's the right name for it? Like this, uh, well, there will be a certain ring. Okay? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and this ring, to me, it kind of resembles maybe, you know, again, hypothetically, the Burnside ring of a group. So you take like a group, you have, uh, you know, sets on which this group acts transitively. And yeah. uh, so you multiply the sets and you decompose them. It's called Burnside yeah. ring. It's a classical object in uh -huh. group theory. I would expect something like this would appear. I see. Uh, in this setting, but I, I don't think, uh, I have not seen any, anything uh, written on this, but I, this I is see. definitely interesting. Yeah, yeah because, there could be definitely. You know, the group of minimal yeah. extensions uh. it does not uh, <clears throat> exist in isolation. It's, a, it's really like a part of some, it's, it's really a collection of invertible objects in some higher categorical structure. That's, that's yeah, what yeah. I see. Yeah. I see, okay. 
but this is very interesting. We should talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, any other questions from the audience? Okay. Um, well, we, if not, uh, we let's say thanks the speaker uh, for a wonderful talk again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, yeah. thank you so yeah. much for, for, the, for the opportunity to speak. I yeah. enjoyed it a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we really so, enjoy your talk. Now uh, we see a bigger picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we have we have a lot of trouble to compute that. You know, it, it, <laughs> not it's, so easy. It's, it's really yeah, difficult. Yeah, not, not, yeah. Nothing really happened. I hope that people who wanted to join that are able to join. I don't. Uh, know. Yeah. Well, I re remember uh, Xiaogang had a um, uh, Xiaogang had a program for for computing this, right? Ah, really? No, no, there's a. Uh, uh now right now we are developing a program to compute this uh uh this uh uh, uh modular tensor category uh -huh. and uh and certainly uh uh when you include symmetries then then would that uh maybe eventually can, we can adapt this program to to include symmetry so right uh -huh. now we just uh, no symmetry uh just a uh, just a modular tensor category uh -huh. Uh, actually, uh, right now we are already ready for that. Yeah, we, we probably can do like a rank eight or maybe rank ten. I think rank eight almost finished, and uh, maybe you can do rank ten. I mean, full classification of rank ten. Oh, that, that that's very interesting. I I mean, I heard recently talks when people did this up to rank six, but I yeah, the se six, yeah. But the, when you do rank six, we will develop some program, and that program, if you run, you can do rank eight. I think eight or more or less complete now. And uh, oh, and uh, then, then because program can improve, uh, I'm hoping we can do rank ten. Uh -huh. But this is without symmetry. When you have a symmetry, you we you assume this modular tensor category have a uh, right. have some a symmetry, has some symmetric fusion category in, in uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Then maybe you can do even bigger by by uh -huh. this additional structure, like a like you just discussed, a review modular tensor category as a there's a Symmetric one, there's a C and there's an M, E, uh -huh. C, M. And then when you have this structure, you, you probably can do bigger. I hope this program eventually can be adapted uh -huh. to do this. Uh, to do this. I think to, if you want, if you just classify module tensor category, maybe rank 10 or maybe rank 12 already pretty large. It's a uh, harder right. to get even bigger. But if you got a symmetry and uh, like classify this uh, super, uh, a module tensor category, not slightly degenerate the one, you can do much bigger. Yeah. Uh -huh. So 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 maybe that's the next next thing. Uh, but but this is just a yeah. It's a, it's kind of a, uh the, the, trying to explore the structure you just described and uh, then make it into something very concrete. The computer can can do the calculation. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Very very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, any comments <laughs> or questions? All right. If not, uh, uh, let's thank Dimitri and uh, I, we will end our uh, talk today. Yes. Right. So, everybody, night. good night. Have a good, good night. Well, good I night. Think it's, it's yeah. Good morning in China, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, well, it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I, all of uh, Xiaogan, uh, we, three of us are in both oh, okay. areas. So, well, yeah, but yeah, a lot of other audience, I think a lot of other audience from China. Yes, indeed. Uh -huh. Yeah, so then good morning then. <laughs> all right, um, have a good day. Have a good okay. day. Bye. Goodbye. All right, bye -bye. take care. Bye-bye.